bring it for you. I'll answer your question probably um, in about two okay. minutes. Um, okay. My name is uh, Meryl Tegestall. Um, I was, uh, I'll give you just a little background. Um, born in the Bronx, New York, uh, back in 71. So some of you guys have been um, <laughs> Like any kid, you know, you get fixated on one thing. My whole thing was Star Trek around seven or eight. So um, I was a big Trek at the time. I loved James T. Kirk. And yeah. he said, uh, one day I'm going to be a pilot. But if you look at Star Trek pretty hard, you knew that Star Trek was more about flying uh, Navy guys, not flying ships. So later on, I kind of cringed when I thought about that being part of ship's company. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, at that age, I decided um, I was going to progress somehow, uh, be good at math and science, and uh, continue on and uh, do good things, and maybe one day be an astronaut. So I had my route planned out about seven or eight years old, which people later told me is kind of strange. But, uh, um, so uh, went to school, went to high school, did uh, reasonably well. Um, not so bad. And, uh, you know, through along the way, I, you know, my, I guess my nature, my enthusiasm, I had a couple of good mentors, uh, good teachers uh, to guide me and say, no, you can't glue the locks to school, you need to study instead. <laughs> so, um, uh, from there, I went to the University of New Haven, uh, in, uh, up in Connecticut, about an hour and a half away, and got my degree in electronic Wow. Um, after that, I knew I was going to join the military. Um, in my mind, I said, uh, I'll at least do the military for at least four years if I'm not a pilot. Um, University of New Haven was kind of unique because they had an aviation program. Um, yeah, they have a, there's a small field uh, about 20 minutes from there. So I had a couple of friends and I'd fly Cessnas with them a little bit. And um, again, I wanted to be more on the engineering side uh, because again, math and science and you know the whole astronaut thing. Did a little bit of research. Uh, you know, wanted a science degree, not more of an aviation. Um, when I got out, I wanted to uh, join one branch of service. It was a toss-up between the Navy or the Air Force. And, uh, it's not a You know, one time I, I went down to Pensacola because that guy I was dating at the time, uh, he was in the Navy, and uh, looked at a lot of the astronauts <laughs> there, a lot of them were naval aviators, and I said, that's it, I'm going to go to the Navy. Uh, and uh, I actually applied, I tried to go, I was in New York City at the time after I graduated, tried to talk to a couple of recruiters, they were like, no, we don't have any pilot slots open, you can't do that. And then uh, my boyfriend was actually living in Yuma, Arizona, he was going to get out, he was enlisted, and uh, he was a And he called me up and he says, hey, I got to... I got, a rec I got a recruiter uh, who wants to talk to you. So I had the recruiter call in San Diego. He said, if you can get out here, take the test, we'll get you a pilot slot. Wow. So Thank I you. took a four-day, because I had no money. My mom was not about to give me any. I took a four-day bus trip. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, <laughs> Four-day bus trip. Oh. I recommend no one ever do that. <laughs> it's, about, it's about the, I've never met the, um, a bunch of weirder group of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you were 22 at the time? I was 22 at the time, and the uh, the type of people there were, um, wow. And hitting on you, I bet. Just, you know, just little incidents, people carrying knives on the bus, and, you know, it was just, it was kind of dysfunctional. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Some people put the fun in dysfunctional. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, after getting out there, uh, took the test, um, they said, hey, we'll call you in a couple of weeks, we'll do your security clearance, ask you routine questions. I hung out with my boyfriend for a while, he got out of the military, we drove back across country, I got back home, and uh, probably about three weeks later I got picked up for um, OCS in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Cool. Cool. Wow. So, Maybe you didn't make it right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you forgive her? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I um, went down, uh, went to Pensacola uh, in '94. Uh, um, it's definitely everything they explain. Uh, if you ever remember Officer and Gentleman? 
Um, if you guys have not seen that, I recommend it. Um, my drill instructor would look like Louis Gossage Jr. He was, he was just as mean. It was kind of, it was kind of spooky actually. He was a sniper guy, and uh, I tell you, it was one of the best experiences ever. Would I do it again? No. <laughs> um, it was, it was a great experience. Um, Marine Corps guys, uh, they definitely have their stuff together. Um, and then went on the pilot training, so I flew T-34s down at uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, out of that, I got helicopters, so um, wow. I got picked up for the H-60 Bravo. Um, went back to Pensacola for um, helicopter training, and uh, from there went to the H-60s down at Mayport, Florida. Stayed there for four years. Um, was going to become a FTU instructor, or in the Navy they called the RAG instructor, but uh, I actually Turned that down because I talked to a detailer and asked, um, I want to do something different. Is there any Air Force jobs out there? Because I wanted to kind of do some joint stuff, say hello, son, and uh, he actually gave me a call prior to me taking the flight instructor at the FTU and said, uh, there's a T-6 job, I don't know what it is, you're going to do a lot of traveling, do you want it? And I said, sure. So I took it. So I ended up going back to Corpus Christi, becoming a T-34 instructor, going to Randolph becoming a T-6 instructor and then going to Moody Air Force Base for another three years as a T-6 instructor, instructing both Navy and uh, Air Force. Uh, when they stood up the JSUPT down there at Moody, yep. they were getting everything else up. So, so uh, that was in uh, Moody, Valdosta, uh, Georgia. Valdosta, Georgia. So you are there with the feeders, maybe gin feeder? Probably. I worked. I don't She's know. a little She's short girl. I'm short blonde girl. She's her husband was flying T-38s in the IFS squadron. The IFS squadron. Yeah. Yeah, and they were there toward the beginning, whenever they opened. Yeah, I was there from 2001 to 4, so I probably, yeah. probably do it. Yeah. Um, I worked for uh, Dog Center, I don't know, he's an F-117 guy, um, in the dress for a while, and then I went on to the squad and I was attached for a while. <laughs> So, good good experience. It was fun. Um, I was about to get out of the Navy. I was going to just uh, leave and then uh, probably do more education. And then uh, I actually, Dog Center actually talked me into either doing one of two things, going to the U-2 with F-117. So, um, got picked up for the U-2, went out and interviewed, and uh, got picked up. So, um, did an inter-service transfer request, and one day I was in the Navy. Uh, with khaki cover. <laughs> that day I um, swore back, swore into the Air Force, switched covers, the next day I went to BO Air Force Base. So, uh, um, went out there uh, to the YouTube program uh, in 2004 and uh, good times, you know, haven't looked back ever since. Um, I love the Navy. I love the time there. I loved uh, being deployed. I mean, I was on I was on small ships. Um, I was on the Normandy on the East Coast. Uh, attached with the GW Battle Group. I was on the Spruance uh, DD963 for those who were like ship numbers and then the frigate for uh, uh, the McInerney for about four months doing the Unitas cruise, uh, South American cruise, um, FFG8. So uh, did a whole bunch of jobs there from weapons and tactics instructor to uh, standing valve to um, operations. So it was a, it was a good time uh, being on the boat. Great life. It was fun. Uh, had fun doing it. So uh, now I'm in the U2 uh, community. Um, stayed there for the last four years, just transferred over here. Um, flying U2s, I mean, we deploy about every 60 days. But I went up to the wing to be a safety, uh, chief of flight safety, and then went on to be the DO of the physiological support detachment there that does all the suits and the uh, majority of the life support in, in regards to U2s. So just, and then, uh, the job came down here open for the commander uh, spot down at Dead 2, uh, flight test, and I've always been interested in seeing how the flight test world lives, and uh, uh, I took the job. So uh, I moved down here about eight months ago, and uh, having a good time. Do you still fly helicopters? I do not. Um, I have not do you miss it? Let me ask you something. Is it true that the only real pilots are helicopter pilots? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I would say, yeah I'd, I'd say, I'd say a helicopter, it's a lot of stick and rudder, so to transfer over to the U2 was...